welcome everybody. We are glad you're all here. So you, normally we have our questions on the right hand side. Um, so if you want to, if you have questions for Phil or Rick and I, just uh, feel free to list them. This is all about healing. Uh, okay, my name is Philip. Ba my name is Philip Barrow. I've been healing for fifty-one years. Uh, I started healing when I was four. Uh, I've got. We all have a lot of gifts, and we just grow into them as we uh, as we go on. Uh, I make my main our main gifts are normally from past lives, but you can actually access knowledge. And uh, an ascended master of Atlantis, Raphael, uh, Merlin are all all in there in there but today i'm just philip barrow but hopefully i've got knowledge that i can give all right your turn deb hi i'm deb purcell and my husband will be joining me soon and my husband and i are uh healers uh we're clairvoyant and uh, we do channel as well um my husband's connected to creator source energy and he scans people and I get the downloaded information on uh, what needs healing and their past lives that are affecting this incarnation. And this happens about three or four years ago. Uh, these gifts were opened up to us this late stage of our lives. And um, that's what we do. So we have a website called Heal Teach, um, healteachlove.org. And you will also find all the recordings from these sessions and from the Lush Mysteries uh, sessions that we have and uh, their information on my, on my website as well. So, and without further ado, we'll get moving here. Uh, the first question I, that we have is from Victoria. Hello, everyone, and hello, Phil. Hello. Um, okay. Well, I've been doing a lot of work, um, mostly uh, energy work. I brought in the pink lotus from the sun, the pink lotus, you know, the violet flower from the sun. And I fried my laptop doing that, completely killed it and I had to replace it. So I was wondering, um, how do we, other than being balanced, I'm fairly balanced, and my energy does flow, um, you know, more or less properly most of the time, but how do I keep from frying things and breaking things? Because I was at, my cell phone glitched out and almost didn't reboot last night and, even though I'm nowhere near my other laptop in my living room, it was glitching. And even this on Zoom here, it glitched. And I didn't do anything. So I was wondering, is there any way to bypass, like, frying things, breaking things? You want to answer that first, Debbie? Deb, sorry. Go outside and do this stuff. Stay away from electronics. That's, <laughs> that's what creator's telling me. Go away from your electronics. You have to be outside near a tree where you're grounding yourself. You, you can't do it inside. I, I, I do think it is a grounding problem. Yes. But, but also you can control the energy that you emit. So well, you need to like take control. She's not controlled. The That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not so much of that. Sometimes it's um, it, it was like I was called to bring in the lotus, and I like I sometimes I just go zip off and bilocate and do things I don't even know. You know, I'm, I know I'm doing it, but I didn't know like when it's gonna happen. It's just so bad, and. I just didn't realize that the the energy was so potent, and then you know, you know, a whole rainbow came over my house. Um, you know, 
the next a few hours later, and then the and then the bullets came in. So it was quite interesting. Um, you know, I went back to Lemuria as well, and there was an Arcturian, the plasma being, the Blu-ray beings, because I went in the blue portal back, uh, back into Lemuria as one of the gatekeepers. So, you know, just those two days of the energy bringing in the Lemurian energy plus the pink lotus, you know, even after the laptop fried, I mean, we're just talking about, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything those couple of days that will require me to like, to use energy only on those two transmission on two, like on those two nights. So the laptop fried the next, um, just a few hours later. But even after the laptop was fried and my brother tried to uh, retrieve the information from it and fix it, a few days later, it was still scorching at 31 degrees. I think you need a protection shield around you, not for you, but from anything out, yeah. uh, like a protection shield from your energy. Um, you mean transmute it more often or just protect yeah. it like... Yeah. Use it, but protect the energy you emit from being emitted. Control it. You need to, a controlling mechanism and a, a shield around you. Normally, we have shields to protect ourselves. You need to protect what's outside you. Which is like an opposite. I yeah. thought about that, um, the shield part. Um, I just never used it. Time to try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was a good advice. Okay, Thank I, you would, guys. I would use a protection shield. Okay. You, you can have an on and off button to protect it yourself. But when I get psychic links, I have an on and off button so I don't have to get linked all the time. Yeah. I mean, even my my Zoom right now, my my PC is flickering and losing um, icons. So yeah, um, but it's fun. Okay, I'll yeah. try it, and then next time, let us know how it goes. Sure, I'll I'll do that. Um, it, it's not because um, I guess it is my energy, right? The energy I bring in. Okay, um, I was thinking maybe it could be like possibly, but I think this is not the case. Um, hackers or, you know, how your computer might be infiltrated, you know? No, um, no it, it won't be that. You, you're too powerful for that. True enough. All right, thank you so much. Okay. Neva, you can record now. I'm sorry. I just saw that your note asking. So, sorry. I have sugar night. I have sugar night around. I bought sugar night. It still doesn't work. It's not powerful enough. I mean, I'll probably need a, a wall of sugar night in order to stop those um, crazy energy that comes in because I carried a master ray in as well. So, you know, when I'm called to do things, um, like, I just found out that I'm, um, I'm a cosmic healer, a universal healer. So I, I did my first major healing for war victims across all dimension and all timelines. For you all might need, yeah, so, you might you, you might need to use it more. That's what it's telling you. You've got too much energy. Start healing like you've just done on all timelines. Re yeah, release I've, the energy. I've been doing that. I've been. Um, I don't even know where the energy comes from. It just comes. It's not like I'm calling it in either. I, mean, I could be just writing some poetry and doing some writing, and suddenly I zip off somewhere, and and I'm fired up and I'm sweating. Well, I'm not quite sweating, but you know, I'm just completely full and my threefold flames is blazing like crazy that you can actually see the light radiating, the, you know, pulsing. I had, I had have pictures and video of it too. So it was really intense, like whenever I have to do that kind of work. Okay. Anyways, thank you. Thanks a lot. 
Wendy is asking for Beth McGowan. Can you talk about how light workers are moving in and out of consciousness for the for the light workers? Any guidance for how to stay more in consciousness? Any insights appreciated? So, so basically, what that conversation stemmed from was uh, Beth and I. You know, we've been doing our sessions going back and forth, um, and this was one where she was trying to find out about her ability to stay more in consciousness. Um, and so what's happening is that she is moving what they would describe as being in and out of the veil. So they were telling her to be more focused on staying in consciousness versus being out of consciousness. So we were hoping to get some clarification on whether that's working on maintaining your higher energy or if, um, I don't know, whatever insights you might have on that. <laughs> what do you think that? that... I'm, I don't really understand what you mean by that. It was, it was more of the coming in and out of 5, 5D. The staying in consciousness keeps you in your fifth dimensional higher self versus coming back to the 3D mm. higher, you know, earth plane, so to speak. I, I wouldn't think about it too much. The more you think about it, the more you'll come into the 3D. You just let it go, you surrender everything and just see what happens. All right, Beth, there's your recommendation. <laughs> let <Yeah>. it go. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, uh, just one so, thing, what does she do in the 5D, you know, in the higher consciousness? What is she doing? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I know she makes crowns <laughs> while she's in the 5D consciousness. <laughs> so I think she's, I think she's a builder. I think she's an architect. I think she's creating and designing things while she's there. But um, that's just, you know, my opinion based off of, it, you know, the conversations that we've had, but I couldn't tell you specifically, honestly. The only time I'm in 5D is when I'm sleeping. And I don't remember it. You're breaking up. Me? Really? Can you hear me now? You okay now? Yeah. I really, the only time I have problems is when I'm in Zoom. It's a crowd. Oh, love this thing. <laughs> love this thing. Um, it, the only time I'm in 5D is when I'm sleeping and I never remember it. So I don't think about it. <laughs> I never think about it. I just do. I, yeah, that's, I, that, I mean, honestly, that's how. Yeah, I just do what I'm here to do. I, I don't worry about it. I, I just don't. I trust that you know i'm i'm here to do what i'm supposed to be doing i'm, I'm here to heal and i you know i i just don't worry about it i don't know why don't tell us stop obsessing don't worry about it it'll all take care of itself right right i i agree i think the pulling out of um i think pulling out of self-doubt and actually i think that was one of the messages that we had for everybody who is on their journey, right? Anywhere that they're on in their journey is that your doubting of yourself, your questioning of yourself actually brings you further away from getting to the attainment that you're trying to reach and that you should just, you know, just be you, just live your life and just be in your joy and whatever your current experience is, whatever you're being led, led to, you know, read or, whether it's a YouTube video or a book or, you know, or something that you're searching on and you, something else comes into your vision or your knowing or a conversation that you have, that those are, you know, those are kind of like areas for you to pique your interest. And if your interest is there, then go there. And then that is you're going there, then that's where the experience ensues. And then it's you being, being, um, in obtaining that experience that that gives you the you know I want to know what's more I want to be more and you already are more <laughs> so yeah. to release that doubt yes release that doubt 
with Wendy. I I did a, an event with David Starr recently, and I went I went to bed after, closed my eyes, and I had the the uh, the world is one. You know when it used to be just one land, and all of a sudden I got Egyptian symbol. I got it as ye yellow stones, and I got Egyptian symbols spreading. I didn't want to think about it. I just let it flow and just see see where it goes because I don't know where it'll go. Yeah. So that was quite quite fascinating. But I call them wow moments, and you just let them flow. You don't even think about you know why I'm here, what what, what I'm in fire, you know I'm in an higher conscious. I just, I just see the message, of what I'm being given. Basically. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. Well, okay. and and that, and that has another point is if we keep worrying about other you know what's going to happen tomorrow, we're missing out on today. We're missing out on living. You know, she's missing out on all her experiences. Mm -hmm. I can't worry about tomorrow. And what's going tomorrow, to Tomorrow will take care of itself. <laughs> it all will. It all will. She's missing out on her kids and their experiences if she's worried about everything. She's got some beautiful kids. Yeah, I agree. May I add something here? Um, even though we're in 5D Earth, and many people are still functioning with the 3D consciousness, we tend to forget the fact that we are in 5D Earth. So really, why does 3D have to apply? If you just stick with the now, the current situation, then you know if you go into 3D Earth, 5D Earth, 7D Earth, isn't that judgment separation all in all? So it's kind of like common sense, which a lot of people, a lot of our conscious awakened people don't seem to understand. It's not that we have to be or must stay or have to reach 5D. We are in 5D. Right. That's really good, Victoria. And also, um, while you were saying that, I was just getting uh, information from my team that... Um, or my higher self, <laughs> they're saying higher self. Okay, me, I'm saying higher self. Um, that we are multidimensional. We are multidimensional. So just because we're not connected to our multidimensionalness while we're awake doing, you know, the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, that we are, you know, to when we're tapping in is that we're kind of going off to a quiet space or meditating or, you know, out outside grounding you know getting connected but as a five-dimensional being you're already doing that work in the astral in those times where deb you and i are very similar in that when we go out i mean i don't remember anything i i don't see the visions and i just but i'm connected so i i will hear things and i'll you know i'll do light language and actually this team energy if you're saying that you're having technology issues the energy is like off the charts right now i mean all of all of everybody what they're thinking about and what they're connecting with right now um they're just really like you you guys you guys watching whether it's everybody here and everybody future are really emitting a lot of energy just listening to this conversation because you're thinking about how you are a multi-dimensional being and how your um, your connectedness is not, you don't, you don't have to do something, you know, you don't have to do. So yeah, I really like that, Victoria. Thank you. And there's one more thing. Um, there's a misconception about the um, the kind of energies we should be carrying, and you know, we come in with different purposes. The only one thing that we all come in for is basically ascension for the planet and for our souls and, you know, for, for all that is. But, but we just need to really not be in like God mode or, or any of that. Because we are constantly doing work, like you said, we're multidimensional. And the thing is that we don't necessarily have to meditate as much as what people think. If you do a lot of meditations, then your goal is primarily, like if you're in an advanced state, it's just to be out there doing work and enjoying your um, multidimensionality, you know what I mean? Because you're out there doing things and you want to tap into it. And um, once you reach a certain level of, once you, a frequency meditation is no longer really demanded from you 
Right. And you can just get into zero point instantly. You can just jump into the void anytime you want to. So yes. yeah, for that's... people who are meditating, who are so focused, because I know a lot of people, like for example, our friends in India, and they're hardcore meditators, spent entire life meditating, but they cannot even reach the level of the crown. If you know what I mean, they cannot get the Kundalini rising. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a matter of doing it right, doing it smart. And meditation is, is, is more for you to just try to get into a more relaxed, maybe to a meditative trance state for you to maybe you know, um, connect to higher beings or yourself or going deep to your heart space and connect with your soul, just to access information. But it's really not that necessary. I mean, as long as you are balanced, your chakras are healed, you won't have that need to meditate as much. Agreed. I think that's why also um, the people that are working like like I know you do and I do and several here do as well work with light language. Um, I think it's in that allowing just saying that I'm already connected in with that frequency and then it just comes through. So when you're ready to say, okay, I'm receiving, then there's then that reception, that connection happens um, telepathically. You don't you don't have to you don't have to think that packets of the data packets, so to speak, um, really just are coming in. And as they're coming in, uh, it just, it just flows, right? It's that whole letting it go, letting it flow. <laughs> How cliche. <laughs> but one but. thing is true though. If anything, this is true. From what I found, the power of word is one thing that we cannot abuse. Mm -hmm. Because once you speak it, you can create it. And it's not just in this realm. It's for all realms. I, I think that depends on the energy you give into it, though. Yes. It's not, it's not just the words. It's the energy you give them as well. It's also the energy. But the word I have found, because I, I write a lot of poetry. I do writing. And suddenly, I find myself like zipping off every time I'm writing something. Then I realize whatever I'm writing is coming into fruition. I'm creating it literally in the astral. Mm -hmm. So it's happening, whatever that it's in my mind, whatever that I speak it especially. So this is really important for people. So the doubts, yeah, if you want to, you know, keep reminding yourself of all your failures and lacks, sure, you can do that. But that's what you will be carrying. It's not only for yourself, but you're bringing this into the collective. It's baggage that you're dumping on others as well. But if you're creating a more positive environment and saying, speaking in positive words of love and gratitude, then this also goes into the collective energy. Agreed. So this is important that people, I feel that, um, it's not so much the path that you take here, but where you stand in terms of your word. Because your word is your honor, your word is your energy. So it doesn't really matter what kind of energy you carry. You're dumping it in, whether you're 2D or 10D, you know, you're dumping it in, you're part of the soup. Yeah, we're already definitely a part of the collective yeah. and keeping that um, positive, energy and actually that's one thing that did come up too is um being reminded to stay out of fear so whether that's you know don't watch tv don't watch the news I, it's kind of a hard thing to ask and a hard thing to say but um but there's definitely an aspect of you know we're listening to oh there's covid every day and you know and and the consequences of it and you know and other other things along those lines so being being conscientious of what your conversations are and the things that you're talking about with other people um mm -hmm. something to something to think about as far as being because we are part of that consciousness you know 
Thank you. Are we, are we moving also on? the, the, the intentions. Question. The intentions are uh, very important. You have your thoughts, you have your uh, words, but your intentions and your is it is connected with your consciousness to such a high degree too. So it's important to if you're if you're zeroing in on your uh, your words and how you're intending for those words to be positive is very important as well. Just wanted to add that. Okay. okay. We can move on. There's um Shannon, can you uh Shannon was in the um Lucalo room and never was never able to, to uh show their video uh their face, but uh, Shannon has a question in here and I think Shannon needs healing. Uh, Phil Shannon has how to heal from decades lifetime of pharmaceutical poison. It uh, been fasting, detoxing, eating raw fruit for six years now, cannot get gut health back and the pain is raging, pushing too hard on my will. Is there any way to heal once the body has been tortured, abused too far, too long, too much? Um, Shannon, I don't you know if you can possibly show your... If you could um, show your... Um, Show yourself on the video. Rick and I at least need to see your energy. There you go. Okay. Do you have a mute? Or do you want to pass it? Oh, I see Phil. <laughs> and she's on. I just need to see her face. Shannon, if you talk, you should be able to come up on screen, unmute and talk. Uh, hi, I have low bandwidth, so it's it's trying. <laughs> Deb, I think what we can do is I've got an, a way of doing it, but I think we should send it all healing after my idea as well. What do you think? There's a there's a lot of healers here. There's a lot of healers here. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm happy to join. Yeah. Okay, so can I give you my idea first, which you can have daily? I, I've said this in the past, create a pill. Do, do you do healing at all or spiritual? What sort of spiritual stuff do you do, Sharon? Shannon Sharon. just said that all she's done is done eating raw, detoxing. Yeah. To get her gut health back. Okay. Is she gone? Did she boot? I think she's just gone. But you know what? She can listen to this later. Oh. So I think you can no. continue on because she was saying that she was having connection she's, issues. She's, she's back on. Okay. So. Uh, my, my, my idea first is you uh, have a ha your, your hand, left hand, create the ask for the universe, bring in energy into a, I've, I've mentioned to a few of these, like a pill, rub it up and down, ask the universe for the ingredients to make you better, to heal you, move it around, become it physical, right? Do it for about 10 minutes. Uh, you can bring in light, angelic light. You can bring in violet flame, all, all sorts of energy, and then take it as a pill once a day and then take a, a real glass of water with it. Uh, but the next stage, we can send the healing as well. Yeah. Gone again. Hmm. So we send her in anyway. She don't have to be on here. And Phil, I was just going to ask to to um, for her. How long does she take the pill? A day, a week? What, She'll once a day. This later, what, what, probably. Once a day. For how long? At least two weeks, and to see how, how it changes. Okay, that's for that's for Shannon. Okay. okay. Should we send her in anyway? Send out anyone healing you want to. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I'll do it for about a few minutes. Okay, for Shannon's highest good. It's going to reach out to uh, her higher self to see if she can. Has any codes here? Okay. Mm. 
So, Shannon, you're actually on. You've just got to uh, give us permission. So just say, you don't have to tell us, just give it in permission to accept the healing. Uh, so that's galactic energy coming in. They are saying that they're coming through and bringing down uh, uh, light to you, white light to you, cleansing, de detoxing, if you will. So uh, imagine opening your crown and pulling in that detoxing as it goes in through your body and then out through your feet and down into Gaia, asking her for her love and guidance to transmute and change that negative energy back into light, that toxicity. <laughs> I, I channeled uh, Andromeda energy, very prickly energy, into you, into the gut. So, see how that goes. Is there any? Do you feel anything, Shannon? She might have felt her under crown there too. I was getting just a. Uh, to activate some energy just to help uh, push it through. There's a bit of a block in the crown, but it should be pushing through now. All right. Yeah, I think it's just, uh, if you're feeling the energy, Shannon, just breathe it in, breathe it in through your crown, third eye, throat, heart chakra, ground it into Gaia, send it in, and just feel the energy continuously coming through your crown, flushing out anything that doesn't serve you anymore, just letting the, the golden light rays, the rainbow rays and coming in, the source rays coming in, and just feel it coming from your crown all the way through your whole system, flushing anything out, cleansing, energy cleansing, and... Uh, and then and, and just allow for your energy to be cleansed removing all those uh detox like a, like a spiritual detox so. what, what i would do as well shannon if you try meditation and when you go into a meditation state tell tell your brain the problem you've got in your gut try and connect to your brain and try and send the signals to try and fix it as well as taking the tablet as well and try and ground it away okay. yeah they they are saying that the uh light language that came through for that healing and david i don't know if you're getting this too and phil um but that uh anybody who's watching this will receive that toxicity cleaning yeah i was doing a geometer system uh you know i was i kept thinking that i was like is that what it's coming through because all of a sudden i just I couldn't even control it. I was trying to say the word toxicity and then it was like, pew, off to something else. <laughs> so, yeah, but it, it was in the back of my mind, it dropped us. So that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Shannon, how are you feeling? She can hear us. Hmm. She got a lot of energy sent to her. Uh, creator was healing uh, actually in her intestines and her stomach. And, and 
doing healing. It's going to go on for a few days. So. Yeah, I just wanted to add that when I went in, I noticed that you're already very dehydrated, Shannon. So make sure that you adequately hydrate. Um, and I'm also feeling like whatever citrus juice you want to add in with your water, I'm feeling like uh, lime, maybe. I don't know. But I, I felt like you were already dehydrated when we started. So you're going to need to hydrate like heck now after that. That, that's such a good point. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing work with healing, they ask even to, you were saying citrus, add lemon in. Um, yeah, I just and, heard lime. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. But I, I, I usually will tell them add lemon, but lime is, I mean, just as wonderful. Um, citrus, well, I think right? It's an, it's an alkalinization thing that needs to happen in her gut um, was what I was feeling, partly parasitic. Um, energetic and I would also make sure that you're cutting some cord shaman it feels like there's a relationship there with that energy and although you don't want it anymore I don't know if you're going about releasing it in the way that it needs to be released in gratitude thank, thank you Sally for that yeah it, sometimes if you've you're got welcome. any pa any pain from the past it can manifest into into the gut or anywhere in the body uh, if you have a lot of pressure or negativity in your brain, it needs to release. So the negativity gets released into your, your weak point, which looks like your gut. So you've just got to release any uh, past traumas, basically, and just let them go. It's very difficult. Uh, so. <clears throat> okay. The next is uh, Nilesh. How can someone heal from sexual trauma? Can you, uh, I'll, which, can you describe how, what sort of sex trauma? Is this uh, spiritual or non? No, Rob, there's a lot of people on the planet that are, are coming into, their awareness, maybe they blocked it for some time about, you know, particular sexual trauma. So it could be, you know, someone that you know, someone that you don't know. I know, you know, a few people who've been raped, gang raped, all sorts, there's all sorts of abuse going on. So, you know, there's a lot of um, sexual trauma being stored there. So I'm just wondering if you have anything to help those, you know, who are particularly going through it at the moment, Ralph, you know what I mean? The, make sense? The, I believe the best way is to actually a lot of people keep this as a secret. They, they also blame themselves for it. And if they keep it a secret, it becomes ownership. They own this problem that they've had in the past. So the best way is to actually find someone who is uh, close. It doesn't, or even not close, but trustworthy and tell them the actual story, release the actual uh, problem, share it basically. Once you keep it inside, it, it can manifest into all sorts of ailments. You, you've got to tell someone who is very, very important to you or trustworthy and release it. By releasing the ownership is the best way. Surrender the ownership, uh, which can be difficult finding someone who you can trust. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. I agree. So what about when they've done that, Raf? And then it's obviously, you know, because there's a very powerless situation that you're put into. And so how, what can they do to regain that control and power back into their life? But they, by still keeping that power, they're still owning it. You've just, you've just got to surrender it and release it. It's very, very difficult. It, uh, obviously you can talk to people who, who are specialists in that. And forgiving, uh, forgiving them, and for forgiveness, yeah. forgiving the perpetrators uh, takes your power back. Yeah. So forgiving it with unconditional love. I mean, it's hard. Yeah. But, uh, it's if if you're holding on to those emotions in in that time and everything like that, it's they have to forgive themselves first. 
you definitely have to forgive yourselves they and forgive they the perpetrators. Hate themselves. They always blame themselves for this. Yeah. They have to well, forgive I'll, themselves. I'll yeah. add a little bit here, or after you, Deb. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I was just going to say, I mean, this is something that I've been working on for years and I've come across a lot of other people like me that also have. And <laughs> what's interesting is that there is this connection. Um, what I've discovered is that this was actually, it's been an attack for a lot of us who are extreme light holders. And the, the idea is that um, by, especially as children, a lot of us went through very similar um, shameful sexual experiences or, or like you said, rapes or whatever. And that that is the reason is because that drops our vibration so low and it keeps it there until we are able to do this healing work. And it pretty much takes us out of commission. And um, a lot of us have, uh, there's a group of people that I've been working with and there's something about this battery and the Moloch. And I don't really understand all this thing, but they were able to connect us to this battery and through our sexual energy and the, the shame that's attached to it, harvest our energy in that way. Uh, anyway, but um, what was really instrumental for me was realizing that I'm a creator and that somehow I called all of these experiences in. And that was what was really when, you know, like David said, empower, empower, that was empowering for me is to shift my perspective and see how what happened to me was for my best and highest good overall. Right. I, Sally, that is so wonderful for you to say that. Um, and you're right. Many mm -hmm. of us have gone through that, especially as, mm -hmm. you know, young girls and, and, and young, young boys young too. Boys too. Been, too yeah. yeah. Have been put in that situation where, um, and you're 100% right on, realizing that you asked for that experience and why did you ask for that experience well you asked for that experience because look at how many of the collective have actually experienced it too and so mm -hmm. as we're all healing together as we're binding our souls together and moving up to that higher frequency it's being able and as we are releasing and healing ourselves we're healing the collective so if you mm -hmm. hadn't gone through that then how do you heal the collective from that when there's been so much not just this here and now, but past generations, um, mm -hmm. that, that we're healing for them too. So, yeah. I, I've done a lot of shadow work and, uh, I've been through a lot of having to heal, um, sexual abuse, um, of me even being different aspects of myself. And it's hard. The child's always very confused, but it, the main message is, is to forgive yourself, to forgive the other person. Otherwise, your energy gets stuck in these times, these stuck, stuck in these traumas. And until you actually release it and with your love from your heart, you're stuck in the in that in that big, in that big perpetrator your energy. You're stuck in it. So, like the, the main thing is like let it go, forgive it, so you can get unstuck and then move on your path of healing. David, you just said something really yeah. profound about that energy and the perpetrator, right? Um, because the more you replay it in your mind, the more you give your energy back to that situation. Can, can, can I, so the best way of doing it is to actually, while you're meditating, is to go back to that scene or just, or just after it. And then you basically, you probably damage your, your soul there. You've probably fragmented your soul. So you've got to basically give love to, to your younger self mm -hmm. and you've got to repair the soul fragment that, that might have detached itself because of the trauma of the event. So it, it's a repair job on yourself. This can be in other lives, or it could be in that you know, life now. But once you go in, you've got to tell your younger self that look, I'm here for you. I will help you. And you've got basically got to give it give give love to your to that part of the soul and coax it back into your old soul. Okay, does does that work? Does that make sense? So I, I think Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. I, I think it's soul trauma a lot of times. 
Uh, I, I think I've told a few of you. I, I had a, a little bit of abuse when I was about eight or nine when when a, a nurse abused me a little bit. <laughs> and, you know, have, and I had to just... Uh, I didn't even remember it till I was doing an awakening. Do and then I, I remembered it. And once I remembered it, obviously then, that must have been stuck inside and I've just sorted it out. So, But it was like a 50-year-old nurse and I was about seven or eight. So, But I didn't remember it. I blocked all that. I, I remember that. Oh. Okay. I would like to add to it. Um, it's for the for eons, let's just say, and women played victim. So this is more than just a soul trauma. It's been going on. It's a program, and it's been baggage loaded upon baggage that we're carrying, that we're not only caring for ourselves, we're also caring for others, as, you know, the collective, so that brings in more burden. It's very heavy and it's imprinted in our DNA. So one, one way to do so is to, if you have an incarnation, like this present incarnation trauma, you can go into your DNA and rewrite it. Find the root and, and, and remove it. And we don't work with ourselves. If we work with our innate, our, our innate can heal us from everything, from physical and emotional um, trauma. And my English is not very good. Sometimes I try to find a word and it's very basic and I don't really know how to express it, but I try. When we go back, for all those years, we can always, like you say, do a soul fragment retrieval. That helps, but I find that the best way to do it is just to get back in touch with your child self, mm. your inner child. I remember the Pleiadians uh, at the very beginning when man was created. They said that once you start hurting and crying, your physical health will start to deteriorate. So being at that state of being positive, happy, joyful, peaceful, just positive energy, that's where we all have to get back to. Because every one of us, not just the females, the males are also having these, you know, baggage that we're bringing in, even if it's not our very own, let's say in this lifetime, we are not suffering. We're also suffering from our ancestral baggage, their programs and what, and what they carry. So I think for the bottom line is just for people just to find their own happiness, happy with themselves, first off, that they, they you know, that they deserve to be the greatest, that they deserve to be treated well. I mean, just because you have one or two bad experience does not mean the whole world is against you, no. And if you can use that hurt, the pain that you suffer, and change it into love, and love more and love others, give back to others. I mean, sure, we, we most likely carry that because we uh, wanted to experience that in this lifetime, so we brought it in. People tend to forget that this is just a shell. This is just one small chapter in our soul's journey. So if we can just use that pain, that energy, that profound, intense pain that we, co that we carry, turn that into light and love, we can help not only the animals, other people, we can help the whole planet. Mm -hmm. That energy, love is the most powerful energy frequency sure. on this planet, or like anywhere really. Yeah. And I find that the only way to activate your threefold flame is you have to experience intense pain and trauma. And this is all part of the cycle. This is all part about you know, the journey that we go through. We need to do, we need to get, we need to go through this. 
I mean, if we're not going but you to still have to do your shadow work. You can't just yeah. like yeah, but it, <laughs> ignore it, that, right? Yeah, but you know, the thing is that what people are not understanding is that it's just a state of perception. Mm. You could carry the entire world on your back, or you can have the choice to let it go, let all of it go. Part of the enlightenment path is for you not to care less, but care more. And because you care more, you don't want other people to suffer. You don't want to suffer. You don't need to take on the extra trauma. So I think it's, you know, there's a lot of stages a person can go through. And, and I feel that depending on how you treat a trauma, sexual trauma, physical, mental trauma, whatever trauma, really depends on, and how fast you heal really depends on how clear you can see things and how much you want to heal. I mean, you can, you can, you can, you know, if you have a very depressed, negative person, you can give them like 20 counseling sessions and that's not going to save them. If the will is not there, it's not going to save them. So to me, I think that we need to be educated in terms of um, understanding that all this shall pass. Whether, but you're, 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 it doesn't pass until you do your inner work. Like you can't just say, I choose to take all my trauma and flip it into positive. It doesn't work like that. You got to go and clear your ancestry lines. Don't, yeah, like I have just... done it that way. I've done it. I have done all my clearing, all my work, everything by myself with no mm. teacher, no guide whatsoever. So I know this is possible. Okay. Victoria, this is where you said love is the best energy. It's strange what I do sometimes. I, I actually create an energy ball, remember the best part of this life, mm -hmm. put it into the energy ball, and either put it in the food or put it in the drink I'm drinking. And it, it'll lift the vibration of what you eat or what you drink. So it's quite interesting that love energy. You know, if it's a collective problem, then we need to bring in more collective, like more energy to help the collective. Helping mm -hmm. just one person, you know, that person. Well, do that when you go job. into, when you do go in your ancestry and you do heal yourself, it does heal the collective energies that that you cause from the acts of negative emotions that were caused from your decisions so it's like when you do go into a war and you clear and you get and forgive within and with everyone that you affected it does release little pieces yes. of their energy that has been stored so it's a collective and a self-healing as well yeah that's why it's important that each individual do their own part when i expect it to heal others in that sense, because once you heal yourself, others are are going to be healed. So yeah, I agree with that. But then I feel that the unification, mm -hmm. the unity on this planet is like practically zero, like because people are not awakening enough and they're not getting together for a common goal. Okay, but this is where we, we, we hold the place for them. Yeah, we've been holding it for a long time. Yeah. The, but the for, global for eons, for eons. awakening is underway now, so it's like yeah. uh, it should be. It should be a, a lot more um, easier. Like the way I think of it is like a lot of the light workers and a lot of the awakened souls and the healed, the people who've been healing themselves. Yeah, this and is holding why, the light is, is up, leading up to this whole moment where we're at right now. And as more why people, people are shouldn't up, be like um, too impatient about not able to heal themselves or anything like that because as long as you don't give up on yourself the healing will be done as long all as right you two i think you could carry this on all day long <laughs> Hilda, should we answer your question sufficiently i think that needs to be a yes because i'm sure you need to move on <laughs> neva has a question <laughs> she's a newbie she's discovering herself and would like to know if she is meant to work more cosmically or spiritually. She feels drawn to both. And Neva? 
if you're drawn to both, that means you can do both. Yes, <laughs> both. <laughs> I, think, I think you answered your own question, actually. That is correct. <laughs> Did you have another question, Eva? Neva, or did you want us to move on? <laughs> okay. Rhonda. Well, just one thing with that is there, just one thing, uh, Debs. There's no boundaries. Don't That's don't right. block, don't think it's not possible. Just let it all go, shred everything. That's right. There are no boundaries. Forward. There are none. Yeah. You have guides and you have angels all around you that are there to help you and guide you. You have guides that give them work to do. They sit around all day twiddling their thumbs. If you need help, give them the work. <laughs> Let's see. Rhonda, That's I have funny. just found out that I am or was Master Guide for real from 280 AD or so. Who is this and how do I grow with this and bring in this information and gifts for real. Hi guys. Hi. Hey, I just wanted to say really quick, um, you know, I am so grateful and thankful for all of you and your courage and strength for going through what has to be done, you know, and um, for all of the other people who are just going, getting to this and attempting it, it's, um, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I just want to thank you guys for, for doing what you do and being who and what you are. So thank you. Well, we're so grateful for this. Uh, getting... I am so grateful every day every day that I'm allowed to do this, really, truly. Rhonda, hmm? Rhonda, how do you know you, how have you found the information? So, um, uh, okay, well, this is how it came about. Um, I'd never heard of this individual before. Uh, I had a dream and the only thing I could remember was three of seven. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> and um, so I was talking to a friend of mine and we, I don't know, something just came to my brain uh, about audio books and I had to put one away in my car. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if, if that's it. And she and I both got like a positive response. And so I went into the car and there were seven audio books in the front and I counted three and it turned out to be an audio book um, that is channeled from this individual master guide Kareel. Um, anyway, I had no, and I was, I was kind of, um, I went through and it, it felt, felt very positive. Um, I kind of got like, you know, this is something that you were or are, I don't know, it just felt, uh, I don't know how to explain it. So anyway, um, that's where I am. So the next stage would be meditate and uh like a telephone, if it is yourself, it, it, it's just like going through a walkway with a door and just open that door, as long as it, the light lights lit from it and just open it and ask this person to give you the knowledge of that time. Okay. So you, you see, my, my past life, how I do it, I, I go down a, like a staircase and then see the doors and then if it's lit, I open the door and just uh, ask to uh, go to this person. And uh, obviously, they've connected to you, so the door should be probably open. So you've just got to then go further in it. So we can't really tell you that it's your journey. You've got to find that. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So if yeah. I could channel it, um, that's probably another way for me to go. Yeah. Right. Channel it, meditate, dream. Okay. It'll come to you. Great. Yeah. I think you can chip. I think you can channel him. 
so you so I could probably channel him. Well, I know that I'm protected, so I don't have to worry about that. I think he was. Um... I've just never heard of him ever. <laughs> Not that he never existed. It's just, I, you know, it's kind of a new, and he, he, he's a master guide not ascended master, which I suppose could be the same thing. I just don't know. Um, so you're getting right. an 80 AD, um, and I don't know for master guide, but it, he sounds like an ascended master to me. Mm. Yeah. I don't think that- That's what I- Go ahead. I think the information you're getting is, he sounds like more of an ascended master. He does not sound like a, a, a guide. I think he sounds like an ascended master who's trying to guide you. I think the message is getting mixed up, but I don't know what 280 is. The year, it's a year. Well, I know you're saying it's a year. <clears throat> I mean, it could be right or wrong. It's it's what I sort of got. Okay. Rhonda, well, um, I'm telling you okay. that he is an ascended master. I don't know about the guide part. Maybe okay. he's a guide. Maybe he's a guide. He's, he's guiding you now, but this is an ascended master. Ah, okay. Wonderful. And I think your spelling's off a little bit. <laughs> It is, you know, I typed it in. It's K-I-R-A-E-L. That's how I saw it on the on the disc. Anyway, but um, okay. Well, uh, I, I will be doing some more whatever it I whatever it is I do. Um, he's definitely <laughs> trying to guide you. Ah. Yeah, Rhonda, that's uh, recently happened to me too. Serapis Bay has recently come into my knowledge and awareness. And so it's just a learning experience. It's just one more of those things that they're trying to help you in your growth and your experience here. And so just, you know, enjoy it and find out what you can and what you can discover. And they often have additional lessons that you can learn. And so it's kind of like just going on that journey. So experience your journey and enjoy it. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Uh, Rhonda, Rhonda, Rhonda yeah. I'm just picking up Eastern, probably Chinese that area, but then around that area, that's what I'm picking up. I can see it in the eye. Ah. <laughs> so, so I can see like an emperor sort of thing, but obviously not an emperor, but that's what I'm visualizing. So. Okay. Okay. So, Great. I, I've just I, I'll only give you that. somebody new I never heard of. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Wendy, can you speak about rays of light and how they combine to work with sound? I was channeling that sound is light and light is sound. Well, it's both frequency, isn't it? Light is frequency, sound is frequency. The rays of light depends, because I always think rays of light are like the angelic different colors. Yeah. How, how do you recommend that those who are not necessarily aware of ray of lights um, work them into their meditation or to call on them for healing? Do they just ask for it and just think about a color or how, what's your recommendation on that? What I tend to do is try and locate the color with the frequency and then try and get the meditation to that frequency. Yeah. So try and find out, I'm not telling. <laughs> so just say it was blue light, try and find out what blue light uh, frequency is, which is normally Michael, and then just give, put the frequency into Google's meditation. So you, you combine in the color with the sound. Yeah, that's, that's what I do anyway. I've done that a bit, yeah. I could give you an example. You know the uh, 
Chinese uh, zither, the 21 string. I'm guided to play that. So I ordered one. My soul was. was what what is it called? Um, a Chinese zither. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I T H E R. Yeah. So it's a string instrument. The one I have is 21 strings. Think in correlation. The 22 master rays, the 21 rays. Each string is one color, one frequency. When I play music, sing, or even hum, it gets, I can't even record it if I have to do it. And I want to test it with people because it goes into other dimensions. It goes into all realms. So that's my understanding of how light is sound and sound is light and the colors. So whatever frequency that you want to use for each level of light that you, or sound that you're going to use, it will represent, um, how do you say frequency, whether it's planetary, galactic, or cosmic. So whatever frequency you want to work with, or you are aligned to work with, you will be able to use that. So when you look at the rainbow rays, for example, you've got the seven you know, main colors of the rainbow, and then you have advanced colors like, you know, magenta, you have the ultraviolet, you have like higher rays, but they're all just mastery at a different level. So when you're able to use sound and, and light at the same time at a master level, you can do profound healing and profound work. But the problem is you're not just healing one person. This is why I don't heal individuals. I heal, like, I'm not even sure what, what I'm healing, but, you know, if I try to heal someone, I'm into, like personal one-on-one, one, one, but I do it anyways with my own energy. But, but when we're doing that kind of work, we're healing into all dimensions and all realms. So it's good, it's good, good that point. you ask. Good point, thank you. I find that very interesting and I like the idea, especially since I keep getting pulled to like new <laughs> instruments to try adding into I don't know, my meditations, just to pull those vibrations in. So yeah, I like that idea too. Thank there's you. another thing that you might want to consider, the crystals, the different color crystals also represent different frequencies. So if you're using crystals along with, with crystal is light, it carries the light energy of the particular color. Some of them are rainbow and whatnot. You use that, you use that, um, my English is not very good. So. Um, trying to get the right words. Um, you use crystals with as a ray here on the planet. So you have access to that energy. So you don't always have to get it from source. Because the crystals are actually the energies that are embedded here with Gaia. And then it's holding that energy. That's why it's that color. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you can utilize the crystals energy for not only healing for raising your vibration or other things, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes the part when you're speaking about crystals makes perfect sense to me because I work with crystal skulls and um, and they tell me that exact same thing about the, how their crystalline is connected into Gaia and that that crystalline brings in uh, the frequency and then that frequency is able to be brought over to um, to the individuals that are are actually like needing that particular healing or needing, you know, access to whatever that frequency is for that crystal. So, If you, know. you pay attention to each crystal, they're alive. They do have a sound to them. And sometimes multiple sound. You can actually hear if you, you know, go part to part with them. Thank you. <laughs> so there's more you can work with. It's, it's um, if, you know, if they don't disappear on you, mine tend to disappear on mine. It's just when it's done here, they just go somewhere else. So I lose <laughs> a lot of crystals. I like, and I just don't want to buy anymore because of that reason. But what but, you yeah. can do, yeah, what you can do as well, you can program cr crystals as well. You can actually put well, intent into them and program them. I can do, do that, jobs. but 
if he wants to go out, let him go so he can go somewhere else and you know, help another area. Mm. I'm fine. I'm happy. <laughs> so, Being Phil, I, yeah. I think that she's gone now. She was showing us some tuning forks. Where's the lady just gone? She was, I think she works with tuning forks. Where's that lady just gone? Neva, Neva, is that her name? She was holding up tuning forks. So I think she was trying to show that we can use them to heal as well, or the frequency of those different tuning forks. Did you see that, Deb? Were you seeing she was showing those? Is that Dow Dow Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. She, she was <clears throat> Neva, were you showing was it Neva? Was it yourself, Dan? Oh no, it was Shannon. Shannon was was showing us the tuning forks she has. Mm -hmm. There, look, can you see? So I think she's implying. Are you saying that, Shannon, that there you use them for healing? Wow. Oh, that was my. <laughs> but I haven't done that. I bought them a few years ago. <laughs> I, I've never used them. No. Right. I think they can be quite powerful, but I've never used them personally. Do you Should use them, Shannon? Or on yourself or others? I guess type your answer. I know you're having a little bit of connection. I'll, oh, I'll read in the chat. I want to stress um, something about using certain tools for sound. Hey, um, for, Wendy, for I just saw that you wanted to record. It's only an hour and a half almost into. Do you want me to send you a copy of the recording or? I'm sorry. Uh, that's fine. A copy after. I completely forgot that I even asked, honestly. <laughs> you have to tell me out loud. And me that I can I can just add you to be able to record. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't see the type, you know, until I scroll. Yeah, that's why you see me putting my readers on to go back and try to read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I lose I lose it. If I scroll, if I scroll too fast, I lose the questions then. So um, okay, Rhonda had a second question. Uh, she wants to, she has tried to dispel attachments but can't seem to get rid of them. Don't what? worry. There's, there's so many other, there's so many other people who have questions here. I, I don't need a second. What attachments do you have? I just have like pains that started from nowhere. I shouldn't have them in my knees and my back and my- well, how, do you, how do you know their attachments? Well, they began from nowhere, from not doing any work. I mean, they've got to come from something. Have you had any stress recently? No, no. At least not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Do you know what attachments are? Yes. They're lost souls. Right? So why would you think you have all these lost souls attaching to you? Well, that's the only way I can figure out where all this, this, um, the pain has come from. They wouldn't, it, it, it just showed up. There's no reason for it to come. I'm right. not doing you know, anything, oh, I'm sorry. You know what, let's just move on, it's okay. No. <laughs> you do have an attachment. <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, wow. You did, you do have, you know, they like your light. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I'm sorry, I had to move. You were I apologize. right. You were right. Yeah. I'm sitting there going, oh, why would she have an attachment? Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's an old man. Oh, lovely. You know, and I've done, so I, I've done the Halo of Atlantis, and I was doing that on a regular basis. And um, his name's Roy. Are you serious? I'm serious. His name okay. is Roy. And where is it? Right, uh, um, right by your root chakra. Oh, that would okay. Mm. 
Royce, oh, Royce saying, I don't want to move. I don't want to leave. Yeah, Roy, you know, I love you, but it is time to go. He likes your light. You're nice yeah. and warm. Well, he can have his own light. Okay, Jesus is here. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Can you help me, please, Jesus? <laughs> Take care of these attachments and let's send them back to the source. <laughs> like this. Okay, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Roy's eyes went. <laughs> <laughs> is that who I think it is? And I said, yes. <laughs> oh, how funny. Is that really him? Yes. I didn't think he was ever real. Yes, he is. Oh. Now listen to this conversation. Will he really take me there? Will he really take me to heaven? If that's where you want to go. <laughs> oh, wow. How cool. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Is that where he goes? <laughs> if that's the place you want to go to. I'm just saying, yeah. He's, he's detaching now. Okay. Thank you, Roy. He says he's sorry. It's, I love you. You're forgiven. Yeah, you have a Dad. wonderful new life with yeah, unconditional I, love. Yeah, I'm, I'm picking up it. He was trying to go. He's done something wrong. He just send it love. Just send it love. It breaks everything. Okay, Jesus is taking him to the light now. Mm -hmm. Right, now we're going to heal the areas. You should feel a lot better, Rhonda. Oh, I'm I'm sending in violet violet ray too. Thank you to that area. It'll just clear it all out. And I'm then warm. Yeah, and then pull in. Um, I don't know. I love Raphael's green. Pull in his green ray into that area for mm. cleansing, healing, and then we'll just seal it up. And your root chakra is getting spun. Mm. Nice and shiny clean now. Thank you all. Much love. And you're all set. And thank you, Jesus, for yeah. doing that for me. Thanks for the help, Jesus. Thank you. Poor, poor, poor Roy. <laughs> wow. He liked you. Oh my gosh. Yes. And, um, you know, I do what I can, but, um, well, you had that bright light. He saw you and jumped on. Woohoo. Right. Thank you. I'll, I need to do You're some more stuff, Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do some more protection or something because no, you, you, know, you know what there's, he brings them home all the time. Ah. They, they follow him home they don't jump on him though they, he, just, he follows, they follow him home and they start talking to me ah uh, right oh my goodness well, thank you I'll need to I don't know what to do how do I keep them away then um or shield around yourself okay Lighten your energy by a shield. Okay. I had been using um, uh, the God. Uh, oh, where did that come from? David, you're the one who gave this to me. Um, God armor. Armor of God. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we'll try that. Thank you. Sorry to. That's all right. So much time again. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see and there that just taps right into trust what you know right you're like it's an entity it's an entity so you already knew so your higher self was already telling you that that's what it was right. so you just needed to trust it and right. 
you I know, work it your was magic. Somewhere, I actually thought it was somewhere else, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. It's all good. Rhonda, I would think about putting protection around you because that could have been a, 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 something really bad. But it, obviously, it was a, something that just attracted to your light. So you, you probably just uh, not cheer, protect, putting protection around yourself as you should do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Will do. And I probably need to do that every day. And I, you know, I'm bad. I haven't been doing it every day. So. Mm. It's gotta be something we can do that we don't have to do every day. Because I would never remember. Holly would like um, a healing for her digestive system. I don't think she's here, is she? Holly Strong, did she leave? She did leave, um, but you can still do the healing for her, whatever she was asking yeah. for. I think so, yeah. So we send an healing, huh? Okay. Shannon is not, a, she was not able to hear and often booted off. Honestly, she's been married and had children with the Rothschild Sicilian Mafia. It's pretty certain that is a load of energy that boggles her mind now, but um, boggles mine too. <laughs> Uh, let's see. She's been on oil of oregano all year on and off, detoxing, meditating in a bath for hours daily. She's dizzy. She's connected on Facebook with uh, Deb Galesh. Don, perhaps we may connect there when you are able and willing. Okay. I, hopefully, um, Shannon, I'll connect with you if I, I hopefully you, you felt the healing, Shannon, because there was a lot of healing going on while you were bouncing on and off um, by several of us here, and your your gut and all of that was healed by angelic and um, light language healing. The, the Andromedan energy came through on. So you, then the next three days, it continues for three days, all this healing. So do a lot of uh, flushing out liquids, drinking um, water, uh, but uh, by, the, by three days, you should have complete healing of your, your gut. So let, let, us, let me know how you feel in a few days. Okay, Shannon, hopefully you heard that. She froze again, she's not moving. And She said, I wish I could hear you all. I've been so trying, although I'm not able to hear fully. I feel wonderful energy being sent. Good. Perhaps there's a playback recording. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hi. Sorry. Can I just say, can I just add something? Sure, finally. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to add if, because um, I heard about the oregano oil and the digestive problems and so on. Um, I'm an aromatherapist and I, this is what I do. I work with the essential oils. So if anyone is from the UK, I'm happy to send them free samples to try. So no, no obligation, just to try, see if it helps them. And they are the most potent, the most natural, the most pure essential oils. So not something you would find in the shop and then it's, with fillers and synthetics is 100% pure. So free samples for anyone that wants, because um, they do help with the digestive system. And also another point for her to try, um, 
digestive enzymes on the physical side of things, basically. That's it. <laughs> Can I add something? Sure. While I was reading Shannon's um, writings with regards to oregano and stuff, I, it, uh, something flashed into my mind. There's a lot of food that I grew up in the Philippines that flashed into my mind, but the, but the um, main thing that it does is all of the foods are fermented. Fermented food, um, probably will help her gut recover some of the enzymes that it's lacking from her if she has gut problem. So that's, it just, I know all of a sudden there's a, a whole load of foods that went to my mind when I was reading her, her stuff. So maybe she can um, start eating fermented food. <laughs> okay. Good. The next question that we have is from Christy Trowbridge. And she has a question regarding her path and what she's supposed to be doing. Who is she? Hmm. Christy, you're still here? Uh, yes, I'm here, sorry. I'm trying to get ready to go. My son's driving me up a wall, so I apologize if you hear him. It's all right, we like kids. Hmm. That's a good question. One of the best advice I can give to that is discovering it yourself. I know that's like, what? That's, why do you think I'm asking? But if you can think, because right now the biggest message going around right now is living in your joy, living in your happiness. So if you can think of one thing, but you put your hand over your heart, one thing that would bring, bring you the most happiness that, that, that you could be doing. And even if it's so stretched, like what could you possibly be doing? And how is the universe going to support me? But you just sit, think of one thing that you could do that would bring you joy, happiness, and love day-to-day -day life that you know and trust the universe would support you. And when that comes to mind, then start looking at other people who are doing similar things and making a living off of it and see what they're doing and, and try to like copy it, but in your own way. So you essentially become somebody who is supported, successful, in doing something that brings in love, joy, and happiness into their life. That's definitely my best advice for that one. Well, first, I wanted to know who she is. Do you mean? So I've been told in the past that I have uh, Pleiadian ties and um, I just kind of wanted to know a little bit more in depth uh, if anybody has any insight. Well, Christy, I'm not sure about your Palladian, but um, you're actually from the angelic realm. You are no less. She's um, she's a Medi. You're a fractal of Archangel Metatron. Oh, wow. Um, that's definitely interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, I knew I had angelic ties as well, but I wasn't, didn't think that it was that in depth. Hmm. You are a fractal of Archangel Metatron. Welcome to your knowing. <laughs> <laughs> It, you guys just blew my Yay, mind. Oh, my. Welcome. <laughs> uh, so, 
so as far as like my path and everything, um, what uh, David was saying is I do have a group that I have started of my own to where I've been doing readings and healings for everybody. However, it hasn't lifted off yet. So I wasn't sure if I was on the right path doing that or if I needed to adjust everything. No, you're definitely on the right path. Because okay. it brings you joy, right? So it's uh, the path of joy is the path of um, abundance. It, it definitely does bring me joy. I have, I, I've known about the spiritual life my entire life. And I actually was raised in it with my parents. Um, and I just, I don't know. I, I've had a falling out with my family. And so I just like, I've been kind of lost. It's definitely a time of faith. It's a time of belief, believing in yourself. And, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes you just got to go in and ask, and ask yourself for, for some guidance. Like, what could I be doing to get more customers? What are other people in my, in, in, that, that are doing healings and card readings? What are they doing to get themselves out there to get more customers? And, and sometimes it's, uh, I see a lot of people right now, they'll offer uh, a discount. Like they'll offer like a, you know, 50% off or a free reading for anybody who's interested. Like one person who's interested will get a free reading and then they get a lot of people who reply. And you can do something like, well, this one person did win it, but if you want, I can give you 50% off my regular 120 for a first time customer. And, you know, you just do little things like that. You get some more customers and then they become customers that you can charge full prices to after you give them a discount. So it's like, there's, there's things like that you can do, but it's, it's totally up to how you're guided and what you want to do and to reach out, but definitely fo follow your path that you're on. It's uh, your path of joy. So it's, Christy, Christy creator just said to trust that and know that um, everything is it's going to work out the way it's supposed to don't just have faith in your abilities and know that uh, and, and what I do and what Rick and I do is um, never go into fear about anything finances or anything always know that you will have the money to pay your bills you will always have the money to buy food everything will be provided tell your and and if you have questions on where what your next steps are give it to your guides tell them you want to be able to trip over the next steps put it right in front of me i don't want to miss it so i want to be able to trip over the next steps if i don't because i want to make sure that i see it because sometimes i have so much going on but I, I miss it. So I don't want to miss it. Make sure I trip on it. If, if you know, where I see it. And, you know, because Rick and I were, oh, you yeah. know, he was working full time and I was sitting at oh, home. Yeah. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. And hello, I hello. Help the man hello. Thing. It's all right. No, here, I'm Sorry, to my, humanity, so what am my I son's to being a little. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, Christy, you're, you're very, very ancient soul. So these lives like Pradians, you've had that life. You've had a drama. You've had most lives. So you're just picking out one. You've got the old row. Most on here have had different being, like being lives. Very experienced. So they're not wow. just the angelic. You've had, you know, loads. Try, try and channel into some of them. I've actually been um, channeling a little bit. I started with a channel named Akoshe, and he uh, has since uh, moved on with his mission, and now there's um, a lady named Mother Akasha who has been coming through. And um, she's been a little distant lately, but she's here every now and then. Um, and I... I know I definitely need to work with her a little bit more. Okay. Um, excuse me, I just wanna say that I think your little guy has a dragon uh, costume on and you know how many of us love our dragons. So thank you for being a little dragon today. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, he absolutely loves dragons, and um, he's just all about them. 
<laughs> That's interesting. I was actually picking up dragons um, off of you too. Yeah, I have dragons all around my apartment. Every single room in my place has dragons everywhere. I've been oh, I want to move in with you. <laughs> I've been connected with them as long as I can remember. I, I feel like I actually walked among them and worked with them at one point. Oh, you probably still do. That's probably not. Yeah, I'm pretty thing. sure you were, you you yeah. have been a dragon. I'm pretty sure you have. Been. I have uh, those um, antique dragon furniture from the emperor in my home. And oh wow! I grew up seeing all of these dragons and they were in my life and so if you want buy furniture or artifacts I have dragons in it and the, I have a phoenix one too so it's both dragon and phoenix but if you can afford it go go find um, some antiques they're really nice to have I definitely will thank you yeah the dragons really do appreciate having that around because those are like um, kind of like their legacy as well. And they connect better with it. Did you have any more questions? I think, um, I, I think she can connect high too. If, if you try to go up to Angelic uh, Dragon Source, I think you could actually hit that level. So I, in my path, I have always been uh, untaught, or I mean, untrained and self-taught. And so I'm not quite sure how to achieve all of those levels and how to go about doing that. Um, is there... The There's a level, um, did you go to New Earth Ascending Consciousness YouTube? It's just New Earth AC, New Earth AC, and... Um, it's Dragon Week, and it's it's day three. We actually go up to Angelic, or not, Dragon Source level. And that one, this is, I think you'd really enjoy that. Okay. So it's New Earth AC for Ascending Consciousness. And it's, okay. uh, find, the video, find the video Dragon Week, the day three. You'll just love okay. that. Okay, is that on YouTube or? Facebook. Yeah, it's YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Okay, I will definitely uh, look that up. You guys are so awesome. And I think uh, Nilesh left, but I think, uh, are you following Nilesh? Christy? Um, I am not. Uh, Gabrielle just brought into everything so I am just starting to get connected with everything that uh, and every one of where I need to go because I know Nilesh is trying yeah, I, to I would say just take your time on it you... I know Nilesh is um, gathering all the um, uh, Archangel Metatrons Okay, I will definitely uh, um, look into that. Uh, if somebody has a, oh, I, so I'm under my alternate name uh, on Facebook, which is Aurora Rose. That was actually given to me by my son who is actually up in spirit. Um, and uh, right now I'm under my legal name on the chat, um, but I'll definitely uh, go on and see what I can find. Okay, you're um, you're with Gabriel Reed. Uh, Gabriel Reed, she knows how to contact me. Okay, yeah, she yeah. has been an absolute delight in learning all of this. Yeah, she knows how to reach me on Facebook. So, and I and I and so yeah, I'll put you in touch with Nilesh. I was just going to mention about a way back. So I'm going to mention about God armor, but I was just in the store, so I couldn't respond. But the uh, it's not like a you do have to put it on frequently, not just like once and then a month later. Um, it's like any protections. You know, it's always good to place your protections before you astral, or you're going to 
meditate. It's just good practice. And then just the setting the intentions that nothing can attach to you, that you're a sovereign being, that you don't accept any attachments is also another good way to protect yourself as well. The protections, uh, but fearing, do not fear is like the common thread that I'm hearing as well in this conversation. Do not fear anything and just know that you're your divine being of love and don't fear anything because if you do fear and give in to fear it will manifest itself into your life and nobody needs that right now so just don't be afraid of or fear anything i just wanted to mention that yeah they also light beings are more powerful than anything so you shouldn't fear anything like hey, to, thank you guys all right i'd like to ask about connecting to the dragon realm you guys are doing that um, through YouTube videos and stuff like that. It's, it's not the same as being melded with a dragon. Is that the same as what did you say? Being melded with a dragon. You mean like, is that the same as integrating with your dragon? Is that what you mean? Or I'm not um, sure exactly. Okay. I have my gold dragon body activated. So I have a dragon in me. Right. So that's what I'm trying to say. It's not like when you, you, you have a group that connect with dragons, are you guys channeling dragons, working with dragons, or um, like... Yeah, we're like many, many of the people that, uh, especially all the admins and the, everyone who's working with dragons has a dragon aspect or... or or has dragons that they work with. And the, the di dragon dimension, it's a little different how I see it. Like they have their own crystal, uh, um, they have their own source, dragon source crystals that they use. They're very protective of it. Um, like I've gone into other realms like the Fey realms and the angelic source levels with the crystal dimensions. And you're allowed to put your hands on the crystal source crystals, but the dragon ones, when I've gone in there, they have not let me touch it. They're always just like, they'll touch the crystals that's meant for us. And then the energy will come through. Is, your it, dragon because, warrior. is it because you're not part of the gold dragon lineage? Um, I don't think so. No, I, I just think they're very protective of their source crystals. They, they are. They, they're like, this, the legend is true. They are really infatuated with them, so to say. But, um, So, so my understanding of it, Victoria, um, I have uh, my primary dragon, but I work with five dragons all together. And then I did a dragon activation video. Um, you can find that on my on my channel with Archangel Raziel and her crystal skulls. But um, if you go there and listen to it, like if you're interested in working with dragons, um, you can watch that. You're already working with the dragon, so you are connected. But it's an agreement. It's a, a soul partnership, a contract that you and your dragon, similar to, I, I think a lot of times people think of dragons as, oh, they're like pets. They're like, you know, my best favorite dog or something. They're not. I mean, they're like another, they are another being. It just, it, it wouldn't be any more that you would have control over your own children or your spouse or your mom and your dad. They're their separate person, entity. They are who they are. Um, so when they work with you, they've agreed to work with you and you've agreed to work with them. And more than likely you've had past lives with either being in the dragon realm or working with them in the past. So that in this current life, if you're working with them or call or feel that desire to work with them, um, they are uh, here to help us with our ascension. And so there's, there's actually an enclave mm -hmm. that has uh, been pulled together to actually work with humans that are interested in working with dragons and the one thing that they ask you to be reminded of is that although they're fierce um if, you know if you were to see them if you were to you know see their claws they're you know they look very fierce and vicious but at the same time they are have a very you know a dragon heart a loyal heart they're very loving and um they're here to help and to heal and so they're helping you with your healing as well so then that uh uh, the other thing that they're doing is they're helping with astral travel so that during night, if you're doing missions and work, they're assisting you with uh, being able to have that capability to go to other dimensions. So when you're saying that a lot of times you're writing and you just look like go somewhere else, yeah. 
It's probably your dragon bringing it's you It's my Rachel. dragon. It's yes. my dragon. I yes. know. So, <laughs> my, yeah. Yeah. So the unicorns also came in as well um, in one of my journeys. But the um, I have seen, I went into, um, what do you call it back? I don't even know how to call it. Um, I went back into my kosh and picked up um, like basically all my soul groups. Everyone was there. All the different types of dragons. And, uh, you know, all different types of beings, uh, elementals, angels, masters, humans, ETs, whatever. It was like crazy. It was like a cross rock um, where you have all these soul groups just running back and forth. It was crazy. And um, so I've seen um, the various types of dragons. Um, that either I work with now or, or I was once in my other aspects, other incarnations. So, um, so I, I'm, I'm just wondering because I haven't found a group of people who talks, who talks about dragons and talks about um, things that are, you know, kind of out of the world. Every time I talk to anyone that you know, they don't seem to understand or relate or resonate with, you know, with the topics, if you know what I mean. So you got the, your dragons that are in the fifth dimension and governing over Earth, the dragon energy is in Gaia big time. And then you have like your, your dragons in the dragon dimension, which is not the magic dimension. But anyway, and then there's like source dragons. So like there's a different levels of dragons and it, it just depends on uh, on how high you can connect with the with them or or how high you can connect in general will depend on what levels of dragons you can work with but um, yeah, they're I protectors use, yeah. they're healers right protectors and healers and, and guides big time I, I tend to send them out to do work and they you know kind of like I have to act I have to be the bridge for them to send them to places. And um, yeah, so it's good. If you can just type down the link again um, to where I could maybe get connected with that community, that would be great on you know, the chat here. Yeah, there's so many people working with dragons. Like the, one time I was doing a healing and this other dimensional demon came in that was with attached with this person and it wouldn't let me i wasn't expecting it um and as soon as i seen it uh and became aware of it while well, as soon as I was healing i scrambled i tried to quickly connect to you know bring in the angelic realm and it was creating all these barriers um like it was the weirdest thing ever uh, so I, I called in my dragon and poof yeah. He transmuted it instantly, just like that, yeah. right? So, like, there, there's so many benefits to dragons. They're very, well, if you, if very protective. The, if you're dealing with the 12 dimensional dragons, um, uh, those little entities out there who's creating all those havoc won't have anything, you know, no power against them. So, yeah, no, that and they're amazing. Like, I walked in, like, I'm a protectorate, like, of uh, this mystery school, and I'm in, and she gets me to, uh, go into the school and check on the energies and stuff because there was these people doing some kind of witchcraft like next door and everything was fine i was clearing the the energies and nothing was too serious but then all of a sudden this one day i walked in and this dark vortex was there and i just i almost walked right into it just because i appeared in the mystery school and it was right there and i didn't even have to call in my dragon instantly it ate it like it was just there's that's how awesome they are they're just yeah, right they by are. your side protective yeah but victoria what is amazing i i've had a guardian dragon since i was born I've, and i thought i was the only one who had dragons around them so it's quite uplifting to see how many people have dragons around yeah. them it is very uplifting but i had one since uh, fair enough i used to tell if i had any bullies i used to just help get the dragon to help me which was wrong <laughs> well, be, be, being a child there phil i think you get off the hook on that one and you have funny. a question phil from so, 
Kathy's um, asking, what are your thoughts on combining ancestral healing techniques combined with channeled galactic being healing, galactic tools, utilizing different types of healing depending on the person you are working with uh, with needs? Okay. Well, it's all your tools, right? So it's whatever tools you have, but usually you, you, you find out what you what needs that person needs on the spot like i don't know about you guys but uh, i i don't ever know what exactly somebody needs until like we're into the healing session the guides come in and but the more tools you have like the galactic tools the the better mm. a, a lot of my uh, yeah a lot of my tools in me are chakra yeah. they, 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 they come out they, they come out when i'm uh, when i need them Right. Yeah, you got some cool tools, that's for sure. Yeah, he's. <laughs> uh, this is the wrong. Uh, this is the wrong uh, group, David. <laughs> no, I feel that I'm being asked to to pull together a team of people. So, like, uh, I'm working with White Cloud at the minute, and I'm also working with a, a galactic being, um, and also an 18th century um, country doctor uh, who was involved with smallpox, cowpox. But that's only two or three at the minute but I feel I'm going to be building up more and more people around me uh with a view to what you say you, you, you're with the patient you're with your client or whatever and you are assessing what their needs are and then you then call on those tools but it's almost like I will be the vessel I will get out of the way for what or they'll be guiding me to help them does that make sense so yeah 100% yeah. If you guys work together we, if you guys work with teams like that already if that was that what you do or how yeah, I just work. call on everybody. I call on everybody basically, and then um, <laughs> and whoever shows up for the highest good of the patient. But yeah, definitely, the more the more that you get into it, the more um, guides you'll get as well. The more the more, more that you're healing people, the more interested higher dimensional beings are to. But work that, with you. it feels like they're bringing uh, very specific knowledge. Like yes. I am told with White Cloud that when they they used to go into the mountains or whatever, and they would. People probably aren't aware, but they used to link with the star people, that they are uh, probably the astral, and they were being guided to help guide their tribes. But it almost star feels like are, are those the, the Native Americans that are alive today. Yeah. Oh like right, the, okay, I yeah. didn't know that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But but There's it feels like that are on the earth today. So right. that again, there was what around the earth today. Hmm. Say that again, Deb, sorry. There are all the tribes that are on the earth today, all of them. Yeah. Right, okay, okay, okay. But it, it just feels like they're, they're sharing their knowledge with me. Yeah. And more and more will come online. But then That's beautiful. Um, it just feels like uh, I, I've just got to connect with them at a clear level and so, be a clear channel for them. Get Calf, oh, you've got okay. you. Oh, go ahead, Phil. You pick the knowing, you pick which one to use. Right. It's okay. your job to pick it. When I did, I've been doing healing 20 years credited, yeah. and I, I pick a dromeda quite a lot. And it, there's, like a, there's like an energy, like a printer who's actually sending energy here from the yep. dromeda system. So you actually pick the one. You're the one who chooses. You're, you're, right. you're the one. They're guiding you where, who to use. You're the one who picks the one to use. And I understand. And you know, you, you know, I don't, I don't do any that. of those things. Rick actually does scans the person. We we see we have to see them physically. We have to mm -hmm. see them. Mm -hmm. He actually scans their body, and I actually get a download, and I actually see the healing happening in their body. So, right. so father is yeah. It's a good a good team you guys have there, yeah. and it, yeah, and it's important did. like uh, how Deb trusts Deb and Rick. They trust that process, and it and it is working. Yeah. And uh, your process working with with White Cloud, right? Is his name White Cloud? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah uh, do. So, but it, it feels like I've got to well. a body. It's almost like we, you know, like a consultant team come together before they not operate, but whatever they do, how they um, approach that patient. It's like those that team around me will do a body scan, and then they will step forward as I, as you say, I have to then learn to say today this patient I need this kind of healing or this support or these tools or but it's building that team together and, and that confidence yeah. of working with each other and just adjusting. And, and Kath, you know, another, which works. another way to think about that too is just to like trust your 
telepathic connection because I know that you've already got that straightened in. So you don't have to worry about who's saying it and, oh, I need to connect with White Cloud or I need to connect with. So the idea is that you've got a toolbox and in your toolbox, you've got your screwdriver, your hammer, your wrench, different sizes of wrench. They're all there and available to you. So as you're doing that healing, as you're healing, as you're hearing, uh, the guidance for what you need to do, just do it. So don't try to assimilate. You might think about it later. You might be, oh, I realized that was, you know, White Cloud or, you know, that was, you know, whoever, whoever else you might That's be counting story. at that time. But while you're doing the work, you just let it happen. You just let it flow. That's I, I, that's what it is, is trusting and knowing yeah. what that yeah. is. It's about, um, it's um, having the confidence to almost let go and know what it's about really. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I was very interested to hear ab about the, using the sound and the light and the light and the sound yeah, and the right. color rays. So that's for me is another, I, I did have some knowledge around that, but I will now add that to my tool and research and find out more about it. And so it's about a whole spectrum of tools um, with crystal healing, with sound, you know, the whole, everything you said today, I have heard with big ears and gone, oh, okay, what does that mean? Okay, so that's good. <laughs> Okay. Um, no, it is exciting because I know, but it's like this country doctor is from the 18th century and she was like, it was like showing me that um, instead of medicine, it was that they use cowpox to counteract smallpox. It's using old ancient healing rather than pharmaceutical, just using the body's natural ability to heal itself really and yeah. using quantum energy to direct, guide, and instruct you wanted to heal itself. We've forgotten how to do that. And that is possible. And that's yeah, and I would trust that. like, I would trust your guidance because you're getting like information that is, that hasn't been here for a while. So keep, uh, keep trusting in your guidance team. And um, like, there's, there's, there's a reason why you're getting this quantum information and this healing, nice. uh, you're being led in this direction. And um, like you, you're, you are are extremely powerful healers, so you have to uh, you have to just believe in your guide teams that for your highest good always that they're there to uh, to assist you. I mean, you're getting this ancient information for a reason. Humanity's waking up. You know, like um, the healers of the world right now are going to be like the celebrities uh, of the old 3D world. Essentially, everybody's going to need them, and they're going to be in an extreme high demand. So just trust yourself and, and, and keep on that journey that you're going on because it's your journey and 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 you're being guided properly so i would just keep trusting thank you that. Andrew, that's appreciated yeah, i do feel that once i get a grasp of it it's i'm still at the very infancy of it but i do feel it's for me to assimilate integrate and then help people with that but then also to teach it so it feels like it's going to come full circle eventually but that it's a work in progress basically so every time i hear a different form of healing or different tool i go okay right I, I find that and then so much that. more is going to become like online especially after the 21st of december like we're building up these energies that are coming in right now full force uh the veal is basically disintegrating and humanity is waking up so it's you'll just you'll just fall right into it it'll be perfect well thank you david that's appreciated yeah Cafe, I've been where's... working with Sasar. She's quite, you know, she's helping me with that. Cafe, do you know where you guys have come from? Do I know? Um, I've got uh, that. How, how, did, how, did, how did you connect to them initially? Um, I have a key galactic guy called B95, and he's brought through new people every time. It's always come through him. Hmm. Uh, Fazar has also introduced. I knew of White Cloud, but she's used her language skills to help me connect with. I've connected with him today, and she's helped me. Um, but again, everything has always gone through B95 for me. He, That's good he's, 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 because, because everything that I mean, is secure through him. Yeah, That's absolutely. A, a I, won't, I won't accept anybody else. Yeah. yeah. yeah he, he, he's like my gatekeeper, really. That's, yeah. yeah. That's good to have that. Yeah, I feel safe. You, you don't know who's coming through, but if you've got someone no, exactly. who you trust, then that's fine. Yeah, like when the 18th yeah. century lady came through. Uh, it's their different styles of each different guide. It's interesting. She's very old fashioned, brusque. You don't question my knowledge, but she knows her stuff. So, but everyone is different and it's knowing how people work with that, their teams really, and just learning. But I've heard you, Wendy, you just go with the flow, feel it through and work as you feel it's natural and then review and learn, review and learn. So yeah, I've understood that. Thank you. 
That's very helpful, guys. Thank you. Okay. Gabrielle. Question about that. How come I never had a guide that <laughs> that says, "Don't question me, don't doubt me, just listen," or you know, like be like that? I've never had that experience before. You probably don't need to. You don't need one. That's fine. The only one that that I know of, uh, I believe that's all I'm really connecting to is my soul directly. So I don't, I, I rarely work with, like, unless I need to do healing and stuff, I rarely work with the other other entities, baby stuff. But yeah, so that's why, are guys normally like that when they tell you to do something? It's a mix. But do they, each one is different with me. Each one. They have their yeah, own personalities. Like it's also like there are also tricksters out there, so it's important to connect in the light of God before you connect with your guides. Like bringing, I always bring down because I can bring down source energy around me, but uh, and then I'll connect with God. But like it's um, just being in the light of God when you connect with your guides, it's uh, it, it will avoid any potential trickster guides from giving you just um, information just to, to feed your ego. Like that's the best way I can put it. Like if you if you're if you have a big ego and you're just listening to all anything that comes into your head, it's kind of trickster energy. But if you if you don't have a big ego, but or it's and if you go into the light of God, seeking counsel and seeking guidance, then it, it's it's information that I've always trusted because I always feel when you're in the light of God, you're protected. And that's, that's just me, but I don't know how others operate. I, I tend to, I tend to work from past aspects of myself. That's mainly mainly for you've got all the knowledge that I need. So that's my my way of doing it. But can you work with future versions of yourself as well, Phil? What's that? Sorry. Can you work with future versions of yourself? I can. <laughs> yeah, I, there's a couple I, I have I have uh, connected to. But one, one needed actually healing from the way he died. And that's a future self. That sounds a bit strange. <laughs> but yes. it, was, it, was a, it was an horrible way he died. He, he, he got killed, basically. But it was on a, another planet. So, uh, yeah, you can, you can go to the future. Because time is not relevant in your timeline. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I've been reading about the Mars, how the, the destruction of Mars, it was pretty awful during those times. You mm. were part of that, weren't you? Uh, I helped create Mars, terrifying. Did you? Wow, okay. So uh, as a, an angel, and I, I still remember it, and it's very sad that it got destroyed in the war. Yeah, yeah I've been reading about it. Yeah. Thank you anyway, appreciate that. Thank you. Gabriel. Gabrielle, sorry. I was wondering if anyone else gets comments that your voice is, is being relaxing. I wonder because I get that comment a lot and wonder if there's a, are light codes in the words or because I'm a healer through voice. Yeah, I've been doing readings more often and um, in my feedback is a lot of what people are saying is they'll sit and watch the readings even after they find that my voice is relaxing. So it had just been so if it was the way I was healing people through my voice or if it had something to do with light codes. So, yeah. Creator saying it's your energy that you're when you're speaking, and it's the loving energy that you're portraying to people. So that's why it's how you're speaking to them. So you're do you are healing in your in your, when your vibration is high. You're okay. that's how you're vibrating to them. That's why. So it's okay. your your intent, your love, and your vibration. Yes. You're healing and you're loving. So, yes. Thank you. <laughs> and he's saying, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. 
he's, he's, words have got love in them. So if your words have got love in them, love heals. It, love gets rid of the dark energies, negative energies of a person. So if you're speaking with love, it's healing them because it's actually sending to the, the places that they need it. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, she needs healing yeah. again for her. Um, you're not pregnant, Gabrielle? No, I haven't. Yeah. You haven't got any, any stress, have you, or anything like that? Any events that's yeah. making you stressful? Well, There's um, something, um, the water's really bad in her area. Mm -hmm. um, and the last yeah. time I did healing on her, it's be, at her, um, her <clears throat> the reason we did healing is the water where she lives is preventing her from getting pregnant. It's actually mm -hmm. toxic. We send an healing then. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can all send healing because she's going to need it. And we need to heal the area that's around her, the water in the area that's around her. Because it's okay. causing a lot of the women in the area to get sick. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I got a code for that. Uh, let me just tune into it. Can you describe uh, a little bit what your uh, closest lake or body of water is to you? She's in Il Southern Illinois, is it? Uh, yeah, I'm in Southern Illinois, the Imbros River, but they have a, I'm still in a trailer park with the, uh, their own like, bay system or whatever, and um, I don't think it's up to par. I think that's big time but other people in the area I think it has to do with the fields maybe like they're standing on the field. Are you understanding her because it's real fuzzy here? It's a little muffled. Yeah. Um what I would do though is I would send a just tune energy in, tune to any in. anything that you eat or drink. Like that was described earlier. Okay, I'm clean water right now. It's a 12th dimensional Palladian code for restoring the water back to its original cellular structure. My hand's still vibrating like crazy. Okay. She noticed a big difference in your drinking water now. Ooh, that was different. And physically, um, you know what to do for the next three days. You're going to be um, feeling some energies in you. Gabriel, remember to channel love energy and anything you intake, food or drink, every meal, descending love energy. Think love of the energy. moment, love the energy. moment, the moment it was best for you ever. Think of it in a in a in your in your hands. Just pour it in. Yeah. Take a few minutes, channeling it into you, and just pour it in. Raises the vibration of your food. It's funny, it's like I'm just getting such cliche advice. She's just uh, just to relax, you know, being going through those meditations and just relax and 
and bring in like some nice soothing energies of relaxation and calming and being centered. But I mean, of course, that's like advice for anybody. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Especially with uh, with these Schumann, Schumann off the scale like it is right now. It's lots, lots of energy coming in. I think that's it. I think we are done. Mm. You want to? I think that's. Uh, They're saying that tomorrow, guys, it would help us to have, if we can, spend two hours in the sun, because the next yeah. week, the dates going forward are going to be important with downloading the DNA and upgrades and stuff. I think you shared that, didn't you, David? Wherever he's gone. But yeah, yeah. tomorrow is one of the dates to do that. Yeah, if you, get, if you can be out, if it's sunny where you are, if you can be out even over the next like three or four days. And then on the 18th of December is a huge day. And obviously the 21st is a massive day. And then it, it even continues on until like January the 7th. Yeah. So, uh, next Saturday is our uh, spending time with Metatron. Same place, same time. Okay. For those that uh, would like to join us. Um, we can uh, end today with a, with a meditation, or we can do light language if anybody would like to do some light. Can, whatever. Can we doing. can we do the eight though? Sure, we can do clear. that. And remember to have loads of water afterwards. Loads of water. Yeah. So all you have to do is. Shall we finish it with that then? Yeah. Great. All you have to do is visualize a halo above your head. It's white light, pure white light, angelic white light, and it's beaming down on you. It then goes down to your head uh, crown chakra, goes back up, goes down a bit more. If it changes colour, this is what you need. It's now going through your system, up to your throat chakra, up again, slowly, up and down, up and down. So it's clearing any any attachments, entities, or any negative energies that you have, or any healing that you need. It goes to your shoulders and it's going two inches up, four inches down, two inches up, four inches down, right to your uh, root chakra. It goes all the way down to your, keeps on going two, in, two inches up, four inches down, two inches up, four inches down to reaches to your feet. Then channel moon energy to cleanse you, right to your crown chakra, all the way down, and then release any negativity to earth. Uh, Just take it a few seconds and go all the way down. And that's it. And then drink water after this session. Just have a few seconds. Thanks, Phil. You're welcome. I have a question, Phil. What yeah? If, what if you're carrying the white light already? With that halo? Um... The halo is like angelic light. If you've got white light anyway, then you probably don't need a, a grounding technique. But you, you could do with using it to ground you anyway, because you, you're obviously your energy is going all over the place. Yeah. So sometimes you could do with grounding it. It just, it just, it just does. As daytime, I bring in the white light, and nighttime, I bring in the gold light to help right. balance with yeah. the moon's energy. So I basically, this is the sun right now, so I need the white, the female yeah. energy. So it does this naturally. Just as long as I'm breathing, the light is there. Mm. So yeah, it sounds like you're always in the in the light. Like if you if you if you feel that you're always in the light, and you can feel that energy around you, then you are. Then, Wonderful. Yeah. So, guys, can I ask you? Don't need. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you and David and Phil, or anybody else that does this, but of late I'm doing more astral work, and I'm finding I'm losing time on the on Earth. So, I, like days are going by, and I go, "Oh, is it that day?" You know, I feel like I've lost. It was a day or two, but now it's like a week. Like last week, I. Just my brain fog is terrible. I, I need to find a technique to ground me back here more now. 
if there's anything you guys use because I'm I am struggling with that a bit at the minute. Yeah, all grounding, hugging. right? Like you put your you can hug a tree. You can imagine the light coming all the way from your top of your uh, crown all the way through out the soles of your feet, anchoring into the center of the earth, wrapping it around the center of the earth. You can imagine roots of light coming in from your feet, going into the ground, deep down to the center of the earth. Or you can step, if, you, if it's not, if you don't have snow there, you can step on the ground when your bare feet go outside, step on the grass, hug a tree, go on walks, like be in nature. That's the best grounding. So much for um, co-creating today with us. It was um, mm. it's it's different every time. It really yeah. is. It's different every time. There's a lot of information today. A lot of healing. It was beautiful. And I'm thank you, thank you, Phil. Thank you. It's always a beautiful session. And we'll see you next time.